So far this earnings season, I feel like most of the banks just haven't gotten the kind of credit they deserve for reporting some truly excellent results, as I talked about at the top of the show. But there have been a few exceptions that just really have been standouts, ones that have delivered strong quarters and actually saw their stocks, stocks rally. Exceptions like Colin Frost Bankers, CFR. It's a Texas-based regional bank that's the number one player in San Antonio and Corpus Christi. Yet last Thursday, Colin Frost shot the lights out and the stock roared higher. But you may have missed it because they reported on the busiest day of earnings season. Now, the company delivered a bountiful 13-cent earnings speed off of a $1.48 basis, higher than expected revenue, rising net interest margins, and average loans up 10% year-over-year. Since then, Colin Frost has been performing like a champ. In fact, the stock's now up more than 20% for 2018. Can this stock keep climbing? Let's check in with Phil Green, the chairman and CEO of Cullen Frost Bankers. Find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Green, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. Great to be back. All right, so Phil, a lot of banks did not report very big loan growth. You had double-digit loan growth. How much of this is just an, an element of what I would just regard as being deregulation, a sense that the tax, the tax changes are working, and let's just call it, because I think I love when you said it, a sense of optimism in Texas. Well, you know, Jim, there's really a couple of things. Uh, one, Texas is a great economy. It's arguably the best economy to operate, I think, in the world. And we're taking advantage of that because we're in some great markets. I think the Tax Act has helped. I think some of the um, investment that's been uh, done by companies buying equipment, taking advantage of the depreciation rules, et cetera, has been a positive. But that really hasn't been what's been driving our growth. It's been a help to it. But our growth is that our people understand what they're supposed to be doing. They're really executing. And they're just taking advantage of the economies that we're in. All right. Now, in a, a part of the Q&A where uh, you were asked by Alex Lau about, uh, cons- about customer optimism, you did mention that the tariffs are a bit of a, a game changer in terms of the cost of rebar of steel. But otherwise, deregulation is far more than offsetting that when it comes to your customer's desire to take loans down. So talk to us about that for a second. You know, I think that this deregulation thing is a big deal. You know, after the election, last uh, the last election that we had you and I talked not long after that we talked about how there was a change in feel a change in optimism of of business owners and I think in retrospect uh, it wasn't because there was a lot of decreased uncertainty because there was a lot of uncertainty about what the new administration would do but I think one thing that was intuitively understood was that the rate of deregul- the rate of regulation would slow and that in fact has happened it's happened for our business it's happened for other businesses and when business has has more uh, has more clarity with regard to deregulation, I think it helps them move forward. And that's been something that we've seen consistently. We have seen, uh, not to attack the media, that was done enough uh, on Saturday night at the White House Correspondents Dinner, but there is a sense these days that, you know what, you can't win, you can't lose. There is such strong employment that wages are going up. I heard you say that, yes, there are parts of Texas that have, you know, 4 under 4% unemployment. Yes, labor costs uh, are going up, but that doesn't mean that business is going down. Oh, no, it doesn't. In fact, you know, business has been great. You know, if you take the energy business, you know, there was a problem a couple of years ago and we've been moving out of it. You know, the Permian Basin is as hot as it's ever been. I saw some numbers on the first quarter growth on energy employment. It was 21 percent annualized growth. Rig count, three year high. So the energy business is really, I think, recovered, particularly in the Permian. And it's beginning to recover in the Eagle Ford and some of the other some of the other basins in in the state. So, but if you look broadly at the rest of the economy, we've had great growth. You know, it's, yeah, it's it's hard to find people, but really good companies with good relationships can. But, you know, that that is something that us, uh, that we as a nation need to be doing is figuring out how to solve the labor uh, supply issue that we have. And we have seen uh, increases in cost of labor. It's just a factor of supply and demand. There you go, because I think a lot of people feel like it should never go up. Uh, that's okay to ha- have booming business. Net interest margin, best increase that I've seen of the banks that I follow. How are you able to have such a huge increase in what is basically risk-free money? It's two things. One, we are asset sensitive. Higher interest rates benefit us, so they're up directionally. That's a benefit to us. Second thing, as you said earlier, loan growth, 10%, and that's broad-based. It's with regard to big deals. It's, it's the smaller core deals. It's consumer loans. It's commercial real estate. So we're in great markets, and we're able to take advantage of that. You guys have always stuck by your knitting, that uh, non-performing asset. Has it ever been lower? Non-performing assets? Yeah, um, yeah they, they are 
improving uh, quarter over quarter. If you look at uh, problem loans, which we define as risk rate 10 and higher loans, those are down by 25 percent from a year ago. Well, look, this is rather remarkable. Last thing I want to uh, be I want to be sure that uh, north of 10 percent of loan book for energy, you're OK with that. Yeah, what, what we led to was the high single digits on loan growth. It could be more than that at times and maybe less than that at times, although I hope, it, hope that's not the case. You know, we've been guiding to high single digits. And the thing we're really guiding to, Jim, is sustainability. What we want is consistent, above average, sustainable, organic growth through great customer experiences that make people's lives better. And we do that within the great economies of Texas, and it's been good for us. We need you up here. I'm so tired of people being so negative. I like people being put to work and making good money, and they do, and everybody benefits. I want to thank Phil Green, Chairman and CEO of Colin Frost Bankers, for putting a little what I regard as being optimism in the stories that we hear. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, Jim. Uh, what can I say? I, you know, when, when people are paid more, uh, despite what the papers say, that, that's good. Mad Money's back here to the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.